Say you got offered the highly coveted job of going back in time and writing music for a game that already exists. How would you do it? The music of the Nier games has a distinct identity, a pervasive sense of melancholy that perfectly suits the tone of the games and a compositional footprint on each and every piece that is unmistakably Nier. It's a tall order, but these time-traveling composition commissioners are offering a lot of money, so we better break down just what makes Nier music sound like Nier music and see what we can come up with. We can break down the different aspects of Nier's music into its melodic, harmonic, and orchestrational tendencies. Melodically, emphasizing non-chord tones that resolve to chord tones over a minor tonic chord creates a very serious, gloomy sound. Harmonically, just about every tune in the soundtrack is written in a minor key, with pieces using separate harmonic language to create either what I call a classical minor sound, or a soft minor sound. And as far as orchestration goes, the most important part that gives Nier's soundtrack its identity is the use of the human voice. Most of the melodies throughout the game's soundtracks are sung by soloist Emmy Evans, who also wrote the lyrics in made-up languages. These made-up lyrics, designed to imitate how our modern-day languages would sound after a thousand years of drifting, add a lot to the dystopian distant future settings of the games, and basing the soundtrack around a solo vocalist is almost completely unique in the video game music landscape. Voice is a texture not used much in video games, even though it's a surprisingly versatile sound to use. It can make music sound cute, like in the case of Loco Roco, or it can hype up the listener, like in the case of Arms. But in Nier, the vocals lend an element of intimacy to the music. It's easier for humans to connect to the human voice than any other instrument after all, so putting Evan's vocal at the front of these heartfelt arrangements makes them even more potent. The more sorrowful tracks are also made more powerful by the addition of Evan's vocals. In the track Grandma, this two-part harmonized vocal line takes the depressing piano part and makes it almost unbearable. This is also an excellent example of one of the game's main two approaches to harmony, what I like to call the classical minor sound. The classical minor sound is characterized by the use of the dominant five chord in a minor key, with the raised leading tone of the key borrowed from the parallel major key. Just this five to minor one resolution on its own immediately evokes a classical sound to me. But to really supercharge the sound, using secondary dominance leading to other chords, leading tone diminished chords that resolve up a half step, and inverting chords to enable more fluid bass motion are the way to go. We see all of these techniques packed into Grandma's looping 8-bar form. All of these techniques and more are used by a four-part vocal chorale on the track Shadow Lord, which exemplifies this kind of gothic minor style.
I want to point out especially the use of the one chord over its fifth, moving to the five chord, which resolves back to the one chord. In both major and minor keys, this move sounds broadly classical, but on top of that, the way we move to the tonic F minor over C by way of an inverted secondary dominant G7 chord setting up a C chord is a great harmonic fakeout. The vibes are just dripping off of this tune and getting my floor dirty, so I gotta move on. The other type of minor key sound that Nier uses is what I call a soft minor sound. This is characterized by the lack of the raised 7th leading tone of the key and generally using a lot weaker harmonic motion. See, in general, chords that move by 4ths or 5ths create a lot of movement, chords that move by step create a little less movement, and chords that move by a 3rd generate almost no harmonic movement at all. In fact, moving between two chords a third apart from each other is generally seen as a prolongation of the first chord, not moving to a new harmonic sound so much as adding a new color to the original sound. Compare this section of Shadow Lord, that is entirely made up of fourth movement, to the track Kaine Salvation, which uses no fourth movement at all. Rather than a dominant D7 chord to resolve back to our tonic G minor, we move up by step from this F chord, featuring a prominent flat 7th scale degree relative to the key. This chord progression, along with the constant ostinato on top linking the chords together, sounds extremely soft to me. Much more about creating an atmosphere than making any big musical gestures. It has a much more melancholy sound compared to the classical minor's heaviness, and it's a style of writing that's very popular in soundtracks today. On top of all these harmonic ideas is the melody, and the melodies of Nier often have a gravity to them that makes them feel important. I attribute this in no small part to the melody's tendency to emphasize a non-chord tone over the tonic minor chord, and then resolve that note to a note in the chord. It seems simple, but it's the kind of thing that just always works. Check out the track Amusement Park from Near Automata, where the melody opens with a big ninth on beat one, the A over a G minor chord that resolves up to the third B flat. The sound of the ninth over a minor chord is both beautiful and tense, and moving to a note in the chord simultaneously resolves that tension and brings out the darkness of the minor chord even more. It's a very emotionally potent maneuver melodically, even when you fully understand what's happening. Check out the guitar melody on the track Repose, which again emphasizes the ninth of our tonic E minor chord before leaping up to the fifth of the chord. The harmony in this piece is about as soft as it gets, with the tonic E minor trading with a colorful C major 7 chord a third below, and a D sus to D move a whole step below. Moving from the minor tonic to the flat 6 major 7 chord might be the hallmark of this soft minor sound. Strong harmonic motion need not apply. Now the best tracks in the Nier games bring together all of these different elements we've talked about and blend them seamlessly together into one solid package, 
elements of both classical minor and soft minor harmony underpinning tragically beautiful melodic statements sung by intimate solo vocals in a strange alien tongue. Even on paper, you can see why this music works so well. Let's see what it looks like when all of these elements come together in one tune. A beautiful song from Near Automata starts its solo vocal melody off with a ninth over its tonic D minor chord before resolving down to the tonic. And then the phrase ends off with another held ninth that sits above a chord with an added flat sixth in the underlying harmony. This gives us a tasty, tasty tritone clash of 7 to 1 cadence. The harmony mixes soft and classical techniques here. We have stepwise motion down to the flat 7 chord, but then we have a secondary dominant resolution to the 4 chord. The following move of a third from our inverted tonic D minor chord to a B flat major 7 feels very soft, but it's immediately countered by the classic 1 over its 5th to 5 7 to 1 cadence. Then we get this dramatic ripoff of O Fortuna, that intense Latin choral tune that you've all heard somewhere but don't know the name of. However, after just four bars of this, uh, shall we call it an homage, we repeat this phrase over a harmonic move down of a third to the flat sixth chord. This is an expertly blended cocktail of classical techniques and modern sensibility. And finally, take a shot every time you hear a ninth over a chord in this piece if you really want to party. Finally, if the games had a theme song, it would be Song of the Ancients, which appears throughout both Near and Near Automata in a few different forms. This tune has it all. Solo vocals singing unintelligible lyrics, a melody entirely based around this motif of hitting the ninth of our tonic C minor chord and bouncing up to the third, and harmony that starts out super soft with this repeating C minor to A flat major 7 vamp before kicking into classical mode on the bridge with this stepwise bass walk up to a secondary dominant resolution to the 4 chord, F minor. I think that having a secondary dominant to the 4 chord in a minor key is one of the coolest things you can do. Something about this bridge sitting on the major third of the key in the bass for a whole bar without ever losing the sense that we're in a minor key is so cool to me. <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff in this music to celebrate, but even more than that, I'm impressed with just the consistency of the music throughout these soundtracks. 
There's so much in common between some of these tunes that it almost feels like cheating, and yet they all have their own identity as a piece of music that doesn't get in the way of the near sound. Music director and lead composer Keiichi Okabe and his team did an excellent job of defining the desolate mood of the games musically, and creating a soundtrack that perfectly complements the existentialist nightmare that is both of these games' plots. Finding creative ways to work within this clear and identifiable style is going to be a very fun part of the job of going back in time and composing the near soundtracks from scratch, and I hope this video will be of some help to you as you embark on that adventure. Okay, big thanks to Alexander Gasky, Mark Starvaji, Mr. Q, Pidiacock, Indigo Poirier, and I'm sure many more patrons over the last couple of years for requesting Nier's music. And thanks to Jason Ulla for the request for using non-lexical vocals in video game music that I kind of sort of touched on here. If you'd like to join these beautiful souls in supporting the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon here. You can also follow me on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Music